How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ken and this is yet another long overdue video that was supposed to come out the same time as the MX Master 3 which was a couple of months ago. We have here another upgrade from my desk setup which is the updated version of the Magic Keyboard for the Mac in white colour without the Touch ID. My initial plan was to make a first impression video but I think I've used this keyboard for over 2 months now and I thought maybe a review video will suit this a little better. So in this video I'll be comparing it to the previous generation Magic Keyboard as well as the Logitech K380 keyboard which is sort of like a similar footprint kind of keyboard and share with you all my first impression and review of the updated Magic Keyboard. So without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. In case you didn't know, there was this 2021 Refresh Magic Keyboard for Mac users sometime back in April 2021 where Apple introduced the new M1 iMac Refresh with a bunch of color themes. This was also the time where they introduced Touch ID for the very first time on the Magic Keyboard as well. Colored Magic Keyboard only comes bundled with the same color theme iMac of course and the variant with the Touch ID is about 170 ringgit extra and that's about 40 US dollars extra. And let's take a look at what comes inside the box. So as usual, Apple's packaging of a product is pretty satisfying to open, unlike the iPhone or iPad packaging where they're stripped for you to peel and remove the plastic sheet. You have to dig deep and rip off the plastic off the Magic Keyboard packaging. And here is the Magic Keyboard, some documentation papers, and this right here is a braided, or Apple calls it woven, USB-C to lightning cable that is new as of the 2021 iMac refresh. And here is the Magic Keyboard itself. I've been wanting to pick up the Magic Keyboard for the ultimate keyboard typing experience for a while now as I'm not a huge fan of mechanical keyboards. Instead, I prefer tactile feedback keys or scissor switch keys for a better typing experience. And that's basically about the unboxing of the 2021 Refresh Magic Keyboard. Next, we'll be taking a look at the design and build quality of the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard has a 75% keyboard layout with a dimension and footprint at about 28cm in width, 11.5cm in depth and only 1.1cm in height and it weighs at only 250 grams, which is crazy light. The Magic Keyboard has a solid plastic base plate with the Apple logo cutout housed in an aluminium chassis. Overall feels pretty solid and has a minimal flex. This keyboard is said to be using scissor switch keys that offers a 1mm travel distance which is excellent for good typing experience. The keycaps used are of a low profile ABS material and it feels very nice to the touch. Now taking a look at the overall keyboard, on the top right there is an on and off toggle switch. When toggled on, you can see the green indication. It is by no means an LED, but just a lime green colour paint. The only LED on the Magic Keyboard is on the caps lock. Once pressed, it is indicated that the cap locks is turned on. And towards the middle of the keyboard, a USB lightning port for charging. And thankfully not situated at the bottom of the keyboard like the notorious Magic Mouse 2. <laughs> Taking a look at the bottom of the keyboard, there are 4 rubber feet for stability. So in comparing it to the previous generation Magic Keyboard, here we have them side by side and some of the obvious changes are mainly on aesthetics, mainly on a refreshed look and design as the overall layout is almost identical. So the obvious changes we can see is the rounded corners of the new refreshed Magic Keyboard. However, the rounded corners are still pretty sharp to the touch. All 4 corners are now rounded off. The keyboard layout is also slightly different, starting from the top right to the left. The volume rocker keys are kept the same, and as you can see, the F5 button is for dictation mode and the F4 key is now added with a spotlight search function. Mission control previously on the F4 key is now on the F3 key on the new keyboard. The notification center button on the F4 keys on the older keyboard is no longer on the new Magic Keyboard. Taking a look at the bottom section, all of the keys and layouts are almost identical, other than the FN key which doubles as a language changing hotkey. There are also changes in the symbols on top of the keycap as such. That's basically all about the refresh of the new 2021 Magic Keyboard. So setting up the Magic Keyboard is fairly straightforward. Turn on the Magic Keyboard by sliding the switch and ensure Bluetooth is switched on as well as on your Mac and the keyboard will immediately appear on your connect list. Hit connect and you are in. When connected, from the Bluetooth drop down list, you get to view the battery percentage on the Magic Keyboard. And this seems to be the only way to know about the battery life of the keyboard. And to my experience, the keyboard lasts for a very very long time until it requires for another charge. Basically, on a full charge, you get about 1-2 to two months of juice depending on your usage and throughout my 2 months of use, I've only charged it once and it's really really long lasting. In case if the keyboard runs out of battery, you can also use the keyboard plug-in while charging, which is pretty good. 
Now, there are a bunch of keyboard settings to play around in system preferences under keyboard section, which I will not be covering in this video. Well, hopefully once I have sufficient use of the keyboard, including the shortcuts, maybe I'll make a short video talking about my most used keyboard shortcuts, but rest assured there are a bunch of videos out there talking about the magic keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys that you can easily find on YouTube. Here is a quick ASMR sound test of me doing a speed typing test on monkeykey.com. Now let's move on to the things that I absolutely love about the Magic Keyboard. First off is the scissor switch tactile feedback of the keys which is absolutely a joy when typing. During my time preparing scripts, I mainly do a ton of typing on a keyboard and the typing experience is none other than phenomenal. Like I cannot fully describe the scissor switch key presses but it is really really good. The footprint on this keyboard being small and lightweight was also something that I was looking for. Previously using the Logitech K380 keyboard showcased a portable small form factor keyboard. In case you haven't checked it out, links will be in the description box below as well on the card above. That being said, I'm often drawn towards portable and functional items. Being able to pack this in your backpack with ease is a plus point for me. For the overall connectivity, I have not faced any delay when typing, the connection is as seamless as it gets. Oh, in case if you're wondering if you can pair this keyboard with a Windows machine, yes you certainly can, but you lose out on the magic keyboard's function button like brightness control or volume controls. These are just the regular FN function keys. So with all of the good stuff said, let's talk about some of the things that I didn't really like about this magic keyboard. First off, this is not a multi-device keyboard, which means you cannot easily switch between different devices like how the K380 keyboard can. For a keyboard that costs about 400 ringgit, this is a single device Bluetooth only keyboard. I mean, compared to the K380 keyboard, it is about 100 ringgit, which is able to pair up to three different devices. However, given that universal control is out now, this is no longer a concern as I am able to use the Magic Keyboard with my iPad through universal control without the need of the conventional way. That is to unpair the Magic Keyboard from my Mac Mini, connect it to the iPad, and when I want to switch back to the Mac, I have to unpair from my iPad and connect it back to the Mac Mini. All of this is really a pain in the butt, even between Apple devices. The pairing process is really troublesome. However, Universal Control, a new built-in feature that was announced back in WWDC in June 2021, is now available for public download, has bridged the gap for this problem. I'm planning to make a whole video talking about all there is to know about Universal Control, so be sure to be stay tuned for that video. However, Universal Control only works between iPads or Mac devices. If you want to connect to other tablets or devices, then it is still a problem. All in all, I'm very very satisfied with the typing experience the Magic Keyboard has to offer. I know some of you are probably more drawn towards mechanical switches, but for me, scissor switches is just a tad bit better. The Magic Keyboard first came out all the way back in October 2015 and the price has remained the same across these years. The build and everything the Magic Keyboard has to offer lives up to its standards. So should you still consider the Magic Keyboard now in 2022? Or perhaps you could consider Apple's rival Logitech, the MX Keys Mini which was said to be up against the Magic Keyboard. I will let you decide it for yourself. And that's basically it for this week's video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Like the video if you actually enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you all so so much for tuning in. My name is Ken and I'll catch you all in the next video. Stay safe, peace out and bye-bye.